coming to you from the deck of LST-325, World War II era landing ship tank, docked here in Macross, Wisconsin. So Walter and I are here doing some prep work for our upcoming 2024 D-Day anniversary project. Okay. LST-325 is the only landing ship tank in World War II that is currently in existence and operations in the United States waters. And this is an actual D-Day veteran landing ship having ground troops on Omaha Beach. And hopefully we can get some good shots and good information for our uh, program coming up. And we want to do one more call out to everyone reminding you about our DA project. But that if you have any family stories, whether home front or from the war front, please contact us through our Facebook pages um, and share those with us. Hi again, we're here on one of the side decks of LST 325 with one of the ship crew members, John, and he's just going to talk a little bit about what he does here um, and what it takes to be a volunteer on LST 325. So, um, thanks for giving us a few minutes or a few seconds, John, and stuff like that. Um, we're talking when you guys um, sailed up here from um, Evansville, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, tell us a little bit about your underway responsibilities and what that entails. So, when we are underway, I am an instrument. So we do four, or yeah, three, four hours on, 12 hour off shifts. Um, when you're on watch, you're down in the engine room, you're looking at gauges, taking readings, uh, or you do a roaming fire watch. So we'll go through the whole ship, make sure there's no fires, that we're not taking our water anywhere. Uh, not too bad down there. Uh, otherwise, the 12 hours off, Pleasure to do whatever you want. Obviously, you can't go short because we're underway, but you do to get to socialize with the other crew members, and it's a lot of fun. Almost like being in the Navy itself a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the watch is kind of trying to think of the word I should use. Uh, simulate what it was like. Um, just kind of keep it true to it. What do you have um, as far as? the training up for doing what you did. Uh, how how long is that or what exactly do you have to go through before you're allowed to work the crew? Uh, so you have to put in 80 hours worth of volunteer time. Uh, after you complete 80 hours and you're eligible for crews, uh, in those 80 hours you, uh, you're down in the engine room, you're learning a lot of what valves do what, there's a whole binder down there that you have to read over procedures, and stuff like that. All right, so there's a lot of responsibility for volunteers. It is a lot of responsibility for volunteers. Okay, well we thank you very much for the, for the time and helping us with our program and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm glad you're able to enjoy a little bit of lacrosse while you're here. Yeah, it's so blast. Yep. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard. For the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tried by night and by day without rest until the victory is won. All right, we're back.
back again, and this time we're up on the deck of LST-325. Now, just imagine, if you will, right behind us here, that all this area would actually have been filled up with various wheeled vehicles, jeeps, deuce and a half trucks, artillery pieces, and all manner of other vehicles, M8 Greyhound armored cars. It's actually got a helipad mark now for its post-war use with the Greek Navy. If you can see behind us here, we've also got additional 40 millimeter Bolford mounts. There's also an Orlikan gun mount lower on the deck. No, and it's um, the LST 325 again, a piece of living history that you're able to experience. Um, we're based out of Evansville, Indiana. It's a, um, it's a nonprofit organization that's keeping it alive. Still a seagoing vessel. Um, yes, it moves here to Lacrosse and to its other ports of call under its own power with an all-volunteer crew. But an exciting part of our research into our D-Day yeah. preparation is just exciting for me to actually be standing on uh, a piece of history that actually was involved in June 6, 1944. Um, imagine being on that pitching, rolling deck as they move through the channel in that foggy, cloudy morning. Almost bad enough that they, you know, there was discussion about whether or not the weather would even hold to allow the invasion to take place. It had already been postponed by 24 hours. But as this we go, we know the weather worked out in our favor. Not only was it involved in the landing of, of troops and vehicles, it was also involved with the um, removal and transport of wounded back to England, um, and also the removal of um, the transport of prisoners from the Normandy beach of the French coast across the English Channel um, to England. So it was it was definitely, it had more than just the landing day at work. It was, it was a heavily used... Um, Absolutely, the backbone of the amphibious forces. Yeah, a lot of naval historians, everyone here is the famous Higgins Post. Um, the personnel landing craft. This is what brought the Higgins Post to the beach. A lot of naval historians, such as Craig Simmons, will say that uh, despite what the Higgins Boat Museum in New Orleans says, um, that the landing ship tanks, LSTs, were a much more valuable key to success for Allied victory um, than the Higgins Boats, despite the Higgins Boat being much more well known and more iconic, I guess you could say. So. Yeah, slightly more romantic with the idea of the uh, open, the open topped boats with the with these young men heading off toward they get hit by the sea spray, but... Yeah, not know, quite as romantic as big, basically a big cargo vessel. What a monster, yes. Yes, stuff like that. So again, keep your eyes on our Facebook pages for more updates as we get closer to June 6, 2024, the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Um, and again, beautiful day to be standing here on a living piece of history.